guys my name is Casey welcome back to Boots and Bounty Homestead don't mind me I'm just trying to get a few things to kind of take out here with me because we got a problem and I'm gonna show you guys what's going on so um, last night so I come outside and was just kind of walking around the garden kind of cleaning up a few things and I got out here where the onions were now the night before on I believe Tuesday night I had come out here and pruned my tomatoes um, I piled them all up where the onions were because there's nothing there and I knew I had to clean that area up anyways because there's some grass and stuff I need to pull up since I don't have the wood chips down in that area as of yet well um, I come out here and started pulling up some grass and was going to collect the tomato plants that I or the tomato limbs and stuff that I had pruned off and all of a sudden this massive collection of bugs come out of these tomato limbs that were just laying down from the night before I said holy crap what is that never seen them before in my life um, so I quickly run inside I got my phone and went back out <laughs> um, so I come out here turn my Google lens on and I identified them as blister beetles oh my goodness so after I identified them it actually started sprinkling and then it began to rain so I went inside and I took that time to kind of look them up and kind of see if they're good if they're bad what do they do how do I get rid of them if I need to get rid of them I'll sit down and um, come to find out they swarm so they kind of come in and swarm do their damage and that's it um, but they do live in the ground um, they can hatch their eggs so a lot of them live in the ground for like they can overwinter to the next year um, they went through the whole life cycle on there um, I was kind of reading over that I was more or less worried about what the heck do I do now because <laughs> um, I was reading up that these blasted things can like they come in and they eat the foliage once they are adults they eat the leaves off your plants um, and they can do it like overnight so that kind of scared me <laughs> um, so I kept reading up on it and I told Stephen, I was like, you get off your live, it quits raining, we've got to go outside. So, um, that happened. We come outside and I put on gloves because whenever you startle these bugs, they secrete um, some kind of fluid, chemical that creates like these dime-sized blisters on our skin. Um, they say that they are toxic to livestock if they're ingested and so I'm like okay well I'm not giving them to the chickens just in case so I was like what do I do because this was like after 8 o'clock the Sun was going down I'm like we're running out of light we're running out of day to actually do something so I told Steve I said like, let's just get a garbage bag and we will bag all this up any of them that I see we will either crush or we will throw in there because I don't want them to get in the dirt and start living in there and eating anything from next year I don't want to have to fight this again next year so we come out here we bagged up all the tomato plants um, and or all the tomato leaves that I had cut off I pulled up all the extra grass any of them that were running across the the ground I was like scooping them up squishing them with my hands throwing them in the bag and they they kind of just dispersed and I didn't see no more and I told Steven I was like well that's that you know if, if they're there I can't I can't find any more I don't know what else to do so after all that I come back out here this morning this is Thursday morning I come back out here and it's nice and cool I'm trying to come out here before um, the Sun really comes up too much and the nice breeze is blowing because as you see over there guys they cut down our or not our but the brush between us and the field so it's pretty naked over there now so we are going to have a lot of wind come through here now um, it felt like a tornado last time they cut that stuff down for several months until it grew back <laughs> but um, anyway so I'm, I'm walking around up here 
and I would go pick blackberries and you know I had to come back inside and get a bowl and went back out there and pick some blackberries and I'm walking around kind of looking to see if I see anything else well lo and behold I get back there where the beets are and this is what my beets now look like to say the least my beet leaves are no more these little things have come in here and now decimated my beet leaves. Now, if I can get close enough, because I don't want to disturb them. I'm kind of barefooted. Well, I've got flip-flops on. Let me see if I can get close enough. All right. I think there's a maybe a couple of them swarming around. But if you can look right in there, you can kind of see some striped ones. Ours are striped here in Tennessee. I mean, you can see them. Let me see if I can get you in the shadows here. The leaves and grass and limbs and stuff are actually moving as they crawl around. There's some. So it looks like they have actually left the beets and are now eating the grass. So, there's that. <laughs> so, I come back over here and sit in the, in the shade. Um, so, as you see, that happened like overnight. I guess I pissed them off whenever I <laughs> moved the tomato limbs. And they went over there and found the beets. Um, and that's okay. We're going to... I mean, I was going to pull them up this weekend anyways. The only problem is now is I have to wear gloves and I've got to go out there. There's several ways that you can treat this. From what I read up, you can actually um, <clears throat> get like, you know, the soapy bucket and just go out there and start knocking them in there, pick them up with um, a gloved hand, put them in there. Um, there is specific chemicals that kills them. Um, now, once you try to collect them all or either just go out there and just squish them all, you know, just do whatever you can to squish them all. Um, but once you start messing with them, they scatter to the ground and they go in the dirt. There's your problem. So whatever we do, we have to do it like fast um, or disturb as little as possible as we are collecting these things. Now, um, it also said that birds can help keep them away. I have seen a couple birds out here. I don't know. I, had, I ain't got time to sit out here and watch birds. I don't know if they are actually going after them or not. But there is a problem, and we have to fix it. Now, where these things come from, I don't know. I have two guesses. Um, either the hay or straw... I think it's hay that we get um, for our to put in our chicken coops and stuff and I have not seen any out there I have not seen any blister beetles out there um, but I think the hay because once it goes through the chicken coops I pull it out and I put it in my garden for mulch and to let it decompose fertilizer um, they the eggs and stuff can live in the hay and they can actually live in like alfalfa and all that once it's cut down and baled they can overwinter. Now we do have some hay we got last year and that's what we've been using. Um, so it could have come from that. I did have hay in that area. I did not have hay back there where the beets are, but like I said, I may have pissed the bugs off. They may have just moved back there. Um, the only other option I can think of would be that over there that is a that's a wheat field that they just got in as of Monday I believe so if if the bugs were over there Monday they come over here say Tuesday I found them Wednesday night that may be the problem they may have come out of that wheat field and now they're in my garden so what am I gonna do about it
Enough said. I don't have time to sit out here and do this. I don't have help um, to do this today. I've got to go inside. I've got to work today. So my timeline is cut very short. And as you see, they have now eaten. Up. That little bird had a blackberry in his mouth. Literally flew by me with a blackberry in his mouth. No, he didn't. I just picked them things. <laughs> and that bird is wiping his beak. They're over there eating my blackberries. <laughs> the things you see around here. Anyways, so, um, anyways, back to this. <laughs> so, what am I going to do about it? So, first things first, like I said, I can't stay out here and I can't pick these things off and I can't go out there and just start decimating all of the foliage out there. And frankly, I'm scared to pull anything out because they may move. And the only things I got left out there are my tomatoes, my corn, okra, and peppers. That's all I've got out there because I'm not doing like a huge garden out there this year. I'm doing some, just some fun stuff because I got a bunch of stuff already canned up that we just hadn't eaten a whole lot on. So this year is kind of my year. I'm kind of doing some fun experimental stuff. Now, I am trying to clear that area where the beets and onions and stuff were. Um, because I want to do a second planting or my first planting, but the end of summer, uh, planting of some green beans, um, since I have the area and I don't have everything just full this year, so I'll have some room. Um, so what I'm doing right now is I'm, I'm going to go all out. I'm putting seven dust on these, these things. I'm going to go out there, take my container and just shake it all over them best I can um, I may even go around the outside first and then sprinkle on the middle. Now, if I have time, I've got some of that mesh that we covered the cabbage with that, or some of that tool um, that I may try to cover it with. It's starting to get hot out here, but I'm going to see, excuse me, I'm going to see what the seven dust does first and see how they react to it. And, um, and then once I get the seven dust all spread out this afternoon, me and Steven can come back out here and we will do a glance over and we may just have to get out here and pick them. Um, so let's go out here and put the seven dust on them and see what they do. It's like where to start. <laughs> okay. Okay, they don't like seven dust because they are running. I have no gloves on. Yep, they are running. Okay. So, yes, they... They do not like seven dust. Okay, so that's that. Um, and I'm out. I think I've got some granules in the shed. I've got to go get my keys and see if I got some granules still in the shed. This little bottle didn't go far. I soaked them on there, but once they hit them, they ran. So that's good. Okay, I gotta make sure I don't have any up my dress real quick. And let me get the granules, and I will catch you back. So it's hard. Okay, guys. Um, so, I'm going to fill you in from what you just saw. That was this morning and I worked all day. I came out on my break and on my lunch and I was just praying and fingers crossed and <laughs> anything just to make sure um, that my whole garden just did not get decimated while I was working today. So what I have learned, uh, two things. The teenager bugs fly and 
um, they don't like the heat. These bugs do not like the heat. So as I was coming out here and looking all over the garden today and making sure I didn't see any damage, I did not. I did not see any damage. I did not even see the bugs that I saw earlier when I showed you guys. Now that was this morning. Like I said, it was still cool and the wind was still breezy and we're gonna have some breeze coming through here now. Now that they've cut our little um, brush fence, if you call it, um, down. So it's gonna be a lot more breezier up here, but more breezier, more breezy up here. Um, so what I have learned is they don't like the heat. So I waited it out today talked to Steven and he went by tractor supply and got the last remaining uh, three pound uh, bottles of seven dust in our county um, I don't know if everybody's fighting this or if everybody just uses it just because um, it's a pretty normal thing around here for people to use seven dust um, not a whole lot of organic gardening and stuff going on around here but um, I would rather use seven dust and protect my plants so they can grow me food than try to go organic and fight these stupid bugs and them eat up my plants and my food. So, um, I usually don't have to use seven dust unless it's, like I said earlier, on my cabbage moths. Um, I mean, on the cabbage for the cabbage moths to get rid of the worms and the eggs and all that. That's about the only time I ever use them. Because like I've told you guys before, I use the marigolds and the basil around my tomato plants to get rid of tomato worms. Um, Japanese beetles have not found me yet. Um, squash bugs. Hi! Squash bugs never, um, never really affect my plants, so I don't have to use anything like that on them. So, let's head out to the garden and let me show you what's going on. Okay, so we took the side panel down right here and i still don't see them it still may be hot enough to where they're not coming out yet so what my plans are is the beets that they have eaten right there all those leaves and stuff i don't know if you guys can see that or not um that i showed you this morning all of those beets of course they're still gone because you know they ain't regrowing anything but <laughs> um we're gonna try to cut those greens off and then just probably throw the turnips out here in the yard and we'll be able to come back and pick them up. But go ahead and cut the greens off, get it to where we can see these things and sprinkle the seven dust down. I don't know where they are right now. I'm thinking they're over there in that grass behind the tomatoes because that's where I seen them go earlier today. They were heading under the shed. Um, so if we can start over here, work our way that way maybe we can stop them from even coming back out i don't see them anywhere right now so we're gonna work on this and see where i can set you guys up at We've got all the grass out, all the beets out. And if you couldn't hear us while we were doing it, um, the ones we were finding were dead. There were a few still living, but uh, hopefully that's a sign that the seven dust is working. So, Steven's going to start. You may have to squeeze it. Yeah, start spreading it pretty heavy. And if it works, then it works. I'd rather use something that works than keep coming out here fighting myself. And I think the heat on top of the seven does work too, the sun. So, 
<sighs> got a bunch of beets I got to pickle now. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh. Okay, so we took a little break, got some water, and kind of regrouping to see what we're going to do. So, now that we have seen that the seven dust, hopefully this is seven dust, that was a success. <laughs> um, since, that, since that's the only thing that was on there, maybe the seven dust fried them in the sun, I don't know. Um, but anyways, yeah, we saw quite a few that were dead. Now, they do play possum, so if you see them, make sure that you are squishing them with a gloved hand. Um, so what we're going to do now is since we got all that corner cleaned out where the beets were, we, and got it, um, got it dusted, we're going to go ahead, Stephen's going to start dusting the tomatoes. You don't really have to put those back on if you don't want to. I'm going to have you finish pulling that stuff. Okay. We're going to start beside quick. the shed, between the shed and the tomatoes, and go ahead and pull that grass up because that's where they were actually heading to when I was out here earlier and I was walking, they were coming out of the wood chips and they were going to the shed so they knew where they were going um and, and what the they were and doing the we found were on that back side so okay they're, they're on that back back wall yeah so we're going to clean up the grass between the tomatoes and the shed and then dust it real quick we're going to dust if we see any try to kill them with our hands um and then we'll just move that way over the tomatoes and then probably the last container we'll have um, we'll have to put on the corn and the okra. I'll check out Stephen's gloves. Right. They're cute. Okay. Considering you can't touch these things. <laughs> we got a half a gallon of water out of each glove earlier. I took them off and just tipped it over and it was dripping out. <laughs> like it was a so full. Was on. So, yeah, we didn't want to use, um, like, working gloves. You know, like the... Um, the hide or the cloth or anything like that because I told Stephen I said well the short they're open on the end and you'll have to oops sorry you'll have to keep everything you do below the glove line or you chance them falling in your glove let me see where I'm gonna sit you guys up do you want to go ahead and dust this a little bit yeah all right we'll dust where we the found them last night since it's already done and um, then I can set you guys there. And what we're going to do is we're going to go back here and go down the back side and start cleaning that up. Go ahead. Yeah, thanks. All right, it's starting to get dark out here. Whoops. One spot on this fence that likes to grab my clothes. Okay, let's go out here. It's cooled off a lot. Let's see if we can see any of these bugs. Let's look around and see. I'll show you guys real quick one sighting of evidence and that's right there because this is done this was done yesterday I think but all they do is eat and poop so you'll see a lot of poop falling down and that'll be evidence that they were there or that they are there um, so we are going to start dusting these tomato plants because we know that they will eat them um, good thing I did come out here and prune them the other night. So, I'm not seeing anything on any of the tomatoes. As of yet. Now you see it's curling here. Just a little tidbit. That means it's hot as Hades around here. Ain't nothing wrong with them. They hot. They're probably thirsty. Might need to come out here and water these things first before we come in here and start decimating all these bugs. Yeah, see there's evidence. They they were trying to get on here. 
I don't see them now, but it don't mean they won't be back. Let's see if we see any back here, because they were back here on this grass. I'm not seeing any anywhere. I don't see any on the ground. Well, there may be one on that leaf right there. Y'all see that leaf? Right there. See that leaf. There might be one. I don't have any gloves, so I'm not touching it. Alright, so we are fixing to get into the brunt of these things. I'm going to go inside and put on some socks and tennis shoes and get Steven off the phone because he's in there talking to one of you guys and get him off the phone and get him out here. So hang tight. All right, battery died. All right, so we got all the weeds pulled up. Steven is dusting again on that outside edge and then all we got to do is the rest of the garden. <laughs> Still got to do the tomato plants themselves. Go ahead and do this whole side over here and the okra and corn down here. So we'll get that done real quick. Well people it has snowed in June <laughs> so everything is covered I know most of y'all are like oh my god it's not organic oh my god you're killing all the beneficial insects you know what if that one bad insect takes over my garden and eats everything I won't need the beneficial insects <laughs> so I am doing what I gotta do because these things can actually live in the ground the the Bugs can go in the ground, and I can have to do this next year, too. Um, that bird is just having a heyday up in that tree. I don't know where he's at, but he's been over here watching us and singing to us all night. But anyways, guys, there is our now dusted garden. Oh, and I have to be careful because um, these little beetles are everywhere. I don't know if you guys can see him. He's right there. He's crawling. When he comes on the outside, I may have to high yai karate chop him like I did earlier. I killed one up here on the top of the thing earlier. Steve so was like, What are you doing? Did you kill one? I said, Shoot, yeah. And if they didn't cause dime sized blisters, I'd squish him with my finger. But they look kind of like lightning bugs. But they're not. Anywho. Okay, guys. We're done for the night. We're all hot and sweaty. And I'm fixing to have to kill this bug over here. He's looking at me. You're going to see my, my Bigfoot coming in here in a minute. Well, guys, I hope this does not happen to you. I hope that you are enjoying this bird singing to us. And... um stick around because i'm gonna see if this actually works i mean like i said we pulled up the beets we've seen a, a crap ton of them dead back there and i'm hoping that this is going to be our solution i don't like to use this much of a solution <laughs> but it is what it is ah. all right i hope i got him hope i got him i'm a little short leg but i didn't get up there Okay, guys, well, anyways, enough rambling on, and stick around. Let's see what happens. Steven is gone inside. We got to cut all the beets off of, we got to cut all the beets off, <laughs> um, because all the tops are dis are disintegrated, decimated, destroyed, eaten up, and uh, so we're going to cut all the beets off, and then I'll be canning them this weekend and bring you guys a canning recipe, so be on the lookout for that. We'll see you next time, and until then, take care. Bye, guys.